Now, Scotland had the chance to qualify for Euro 2024 last night against Spain, but it wasn't the triumph the Tartan army were hoping for. Sam Ellard is here from Talk Sport. Uh, Sam, a loss for Scotland last night. 2-0 to Spain, but it's not all over yet. Oh, it's not all over yet. It's far from over. Bad news is they did get beat last night in Spain. By the way, they got they, they, a 0-0. They had a goal disallowed, which should not have been disallowed. In your was, opinion. In my opinion. In your opinion. In, short, in my yeah. opinion, it should have been disallowed. Free kick whipped in by McTominay. Goes straight through, OK? It was given as offside that one of the Scotland players was interfering with the goalkeeper's line of vision. He wasn't. If they went 1-0 up, the whole game would have changed then. Mm. But they did go on to lose 2-0. That's the bad news. The good news is, though, is it will take a monumental mess up if they don't qualify for the Euros from here, OK? They can qualify on Sunday if Norway lose to Spain. If they don't, then in November, during the next set of international fixtures, Scotland will have another chance to secure qualification. They will qualify. They will be at the Euros in 2024. Steve Clark is doing a quite remarkable job of Scotland. OK, let's move on, shall we, to the Grand National. Uh, honestly, very early in the year to be talking about the Grand National, I thought. But anyway, uh, the Grand National changes here in the Grand National, and particularly the, the line-up of, of Absolutely. the, the, Big the runners and riders. And it's the first time we've had changes like this in, in, in 40 years. And really, the headline is that it's going to be reduced from... 40 horses down to, to 34 or so some That's of the lengths. That's slightly and... more than some campaigners had called for, isn't it? That, that is true. And the main reason, as, as, as we're about to touch on, why this is all happening is for the safety of the animals. Um, mm. There are unfortunately three deaths at Aintree. Mm -hmm. um, and as we know, the deaths in horses, unfortunately, happens um, way too much and we, we don't want it to happen. So the main reason is the thought process is, is if it's a slightly reduced field, if there's less horses, there's less chance of these tragic incidents happening. So it's going to go from 40 to 34. First change in this meeting um, since 40 years. So big, big changes as well. Mm. 40 down to 34. And the hope is it's going to be safer for the horses. And, and do you think this will appease activists, actually? Reducing to 34, as Sarah says, many of them wanted to go to a much smaller playing field. Will this be enough? No. The short answer is no. I think they'll want way, way, way. I think some of them won't want horse racing to happen. I mean, a full stop, right? Mm. Because, yeah, sure, 34 is less than 40, but still 34 horses is always mm. still going to be a chance of something like that happening. So is this going to appease them? Is it, is, is it going to make them happy? I think the short answer to that question is no. I mean, of course, it's a massive industry as well, isn't massive it? Industry, and a massive industry. And the trainers well. and the people who own Absolutely. the horses and, of course, mm. the people who actually put yeah. the bets on and so on. Um, let's talk about England versus Australia. Friendly uh, tonight at Wembley. Gareth Southgate's team on the verge of qualifying. Yeah, again, they can, they, can, they can qualify on Tuesday if they beat Italy. So the game this evening is going to be a friendly against Australia. Then they've got a qualifier against Italy on Tuesday at Wembley. So this is like the warm-up. So warm this up. is the warm-up game. So, yeah, I mean, on Tuesday, the, the qualifier against Italy, that's where we're seeing the strongest 11. I think this evening, essentially, we're going to see a second-string England 11. But I still think that's really, really exciting. Some fringe players going to get given the opportunities. That's really the main point of these friendlies. I think two players I want to highlight in particular, Jared Bowen, he's been in fantastic form for West Ham. We think we understand he's going to start this evening. Also, Ollie Watkins, who's been in fantastic form for Aston Villa, scoring loads and loads of goals. Obviously, Harry Kane is the main striker. He'll play Tuesday. Ollie Watkins to play this evening. I know it's a friendly. Some people think these international breaks come at a bad time. They ruin the flow of the Premier League season. But tonight, we'll really see the real depth England have, um, certainly in attacking positions, and in particular, Bowen and Watkins get an opportunity to go from the start this evening against Australia. OK, let's move to the sun. This is pages <laughs> six and seven. The headline is Outrage at Wembley's foul play over Israel. This is about whether Wembley should light up in support of Israel. Now, my personal feeling is that I think sport should be apolitical. But that being said, of course, when you look back at all the pictures they've highlighted, they've lit up in various colours for Alzheimer's, for COVID, for LGBTQ+, for Pele, for France, for Turkey. Why not Israel? Well, exactly. And I think that's where a lot of this frustration comes from, that in recent years, certainly with, with France and Ukraine, um, they lit up the arc in their country's colours to show solidarity after terrible attacks in their country. And I think people are slightly confused. We've done it for France in recent years. We've done it for Ukraine in recent years. Why aren't we doing it this evening? There will be a minute silence before the game as well this evening. They are going to be black armbands worn as well. The Premier League as well are going to do the same thing next week when that comes back. But the big news we found out yesterday is the Wembley arc will not be in the blue and white colours. And as you say, you found it out yesterday. The FA's had 
a, quite a few well, days a good four, to deliberate days. Mm. Absolutely. over this. And the Culture Secretary, Lucy Fraser, sent some pretty stern tweets last night saying she was extremely disappointed by the FA's decision uh, not to light up Wembley Stadium Arch following last weekend's horrific terrorist attack. She's made her views clear uh, to the FA and she points out it's disappointing in the light of the FA's bold stance on other terrorist attacks. I saw Gareth Southgate uh, being asked about this in the news conference yesterday. Mm -hmm. They have clearly been grappling uh, with this mm. and have come up with a fudge. I think so. I think, and I mean, I think, I mean, Ollie Holt in the in the back of the Daily Mail this morning has wrote a really strong article as well, and he sort of highlighted the point that how on earth can they come out and do it for other countries like France and Ukraine, but not then do it when, mm. and, you know, let's be honest, we've, we've discussed it on the show, what's been happening in Israel has been nothing short of disgraceful. Why now? Why not do it now? What's the difference here between this and other attacks? Well, I think a lot of people, a lot of Jewish communities and, you know, some people within football, they feel like the FA have, have, have perhaps let a few people down here. Yeah, yeah, and I, th I think you're right, though. They've set a precedent here, haven't they? Mm -hmm. And so it just it, it just smarts. That being said, we're having a lot of messages saying that football should be apolitical. So people on both sides of this, I can see it from both sides, but having done this for other things, not just countries, but indeed um, but for, I think that's for it, causes. Though. I think if they, if they didn't do it for, for other countries and they sort of made a, a stand that we're going to keep ourselves away from these incidents... Yeah. Um, we're not going to light it up for Ukraine, for France, then I don't think we'd be even maybe potentially discussing this. Mm -hmm. I just think it's happened for other countries, so some people would argue and sit here and say, why? Why isn't happening for Israel? OK, Sam, thank you. And you feel very strongly about this. We'll be reading out some of your messages later on in the programme.